Shad Everest. Greetings, I'm Shad, and I want to talk a little bit about the differences between the machete and the falchion. And this isn't a falchion, according to the, uh, the, the hilt, it's actually a cutlass. But if you were to change the hilt on this and give it a cross guard and a nice, you know, round pummel, perfect example, example of a falchion. So that, this is kind of my falchion stand-in. But what's interesting about these uh, things I've been considering about the differences is that I have an opportunity to make a very authentic falchion and I'll talk a little bit about that in its own dedicated video. And so there's a bit of misunderstanding I'm finding between falchions and machetes because there's actually a lot of similarities. The first similarity that people will find when they look at a stereotypical machete is the profile. Okay, looking at the profile here, there are reasons why this machete is not a falchion, but there are some really important similarities. The blade profile being one of them, okay? See how it swells at the tip, all right? Many stereotypical falchions have that, not all of them, okay? In actual fact, the falchion is a very broad category. People usually think of the Conyers falchion, and I'll bring up an image here of what the Conyers falchion kind of looks like. That's the more stereotypical type of falchion, and there are a lot of similarities to the blade profile I have on this machete to the most iconic stereotypical falchion. But falchion blade types, there's a lot. In fact, Look at the Elmsley typology. And if you have a look, you'll see a whole range of different falchion blade profiles. For instance, this blade profile on this Kriegsmesser, if you change the hilt construction from that being like a knife construction to a sword construction, you would now have a two-handed falchion. Very broad categories, as I mentioned. But when we look at the uh, iconic type of falchions, all right, with uh, the uh, type of blade profile where it swells towards the tip, there are some very important elements that are often missed in the falchions that you can buy online. I'm still looking for a really good affordable falchion model that is historically accurate and I haven't found one yet. This little cutlass here, it has a, a great falchion blade but you'll also notice it doesn't necessarily have that really strong swelling at the tip that you see on many iconic falchions, the more stereotypical types of falchions. So it's another good example or representation of different falchion style blades. The thing that this has, which makes this what you would consider a sword blade, and this blade being a, uh, a machete blade, is in the specific type of machine, look I haven't even taken the thing, it's the specific type of machining and engineering that goes into sword blades. So what we're talking about is distal taper, and so distal taper is when it tapers, gets thinner towards the edge on this plane. But not only that, it's how the bevels are put on it. Now, What's interesting is that I am confident enough to say that I w could bet there would be cheap blades historically that were pretty flat like this and just has a, has a really basic single edge bevel ground onto it just like that. It would be considered poorly done because more, uh, I guess, um, uh, refined sword blades, in actual fact the more standard types of sword blades, have bevels that are far more sophisticated. So if you see here, there is actually a consistent bevel all the way from the fuller down to the edge, but that's not the only bevel it has. It doesn't go all the way down into a straight line. There is a micro bevel. So it comes down really, really thin consistently. And then there is a small micro bevel at the very end. Otherwise the edge would just be way, way, way too thin if there was a consistent bevel that, that came down at a very consistent gradual rate to the edge from the fuller line. But by having a reduction from the fuller line down to the edge, you take off unneeded material, making the blade lighter and more maneuverable as a result. And so this type of shaping from the way that the uh, edges are handled, the bevels, and the uh, distal taper is what you want to find on sword blades. This is why when you look at this, you would say, that's a sword blade and this is a machete blade. So there are distinct differences, even though I think there is the exception, as I mentioned, that you probably could find cheaply made sword blades that were just like this, historically. The interesting thing that I find about a lot of these machete blades, this is my favorite at the moment, it's the cold steel um, kind of D-guard, you know, uh, machete. But what I'm saying, well, the interesting thing is how thin the blades are on these 
machetes because most falchions that you buy are way too thick. It's not to say you can't get thicker falchion blades, like remember how I said this blade could be a falchion blade if the handle was different? Very thick spine, but what you see here, see how gradual the, um, the beveling is from the fuller? And there is a very distinct distal taper on this. So this is actually a very beautifully engineered sword blade that we have on this Kriegsmesser. Cold Steel Kriegsmesser, dedicated review if you're interested. So even though you can get falchion blades that are thicker, one of the iconic elements of the stereotypical types of falchions, we're looking at the Konya's falchion and types around that, is how thin the blades are. Blade types of this that we're seeing here, if they're going to be historically accurate, they are supposed to have very thin blades. So thin, in fact, James Elmsley, he's the expert in this, right? I got to have a back and forth with him and he gave me some really intriguing information. One of the things that he even pointed out, so some of the surviving falchions that we have historically, right, were so thin that the rusting has actually made holes in the blade, okay? They're that thin, they're actually holes in the blade on the surviving examples. So these are meant to be razor blades and it's a complete misconception to say that they're supposed to be heavy cutters. No, no, they're supposed to be like razor blade cutters, okay? They're great at cutting, they will slash up and they get the advantage of you know in the cut due to the blade profile, okay? But like even though they're thin, by having the swell here, it does situate the main kind of driving power in the cut at the top end, which is why we see it on machetes as well. Machetes are there to just cut and hack. So it makes sense that they have similar blade profiles as we see on traditional falchions. The thing is, as I mentioned, I just find it so interesting. I have found more blade profiles that have the correct width on machetes than I have on falchions that I've, I haven't purchased. I, I held handle. I went to some stores and everything, saw some falchions, picked up. They were just way too thick. But yet, when I bought these machetes, I was like, huh, there's some really interesting things. So much so that with the cor correct type of grinding to just correct these edge bevels, right? Maybe even putting a fuller on it. This Sounds gorgeous. Not only is actually really good spring steel, okay, this is actually a perfect blank for a very historically authentic falchion blade. It just needs a bit of extra work on it. And what really threw me, right, is when I picked up this one and I compared the weights between these two and this one's lighter and more nimble. And then I looked at it and oh my goodness, this one has a distal taper. I'm not kidding. It starts out as at one millimeter at the base and it thins down up here to half a millimeter. Just, I can tell by looking at it. The fact that this has a distal taper and is appropriately thin, even though the bevels are not perfect. And when I, like, I was almost gonna say historically inaccurate. I, as I mentioned, I think you could find crappy bevels like this even on historical swords, right? But it's just not near the refinement that you would expect on really good swords and even most swords, honestly. But the fact that it got these other two really important elements correct on this blade, which is the distal taper and the thickness of the sword, this is actually a more historically valid blade than a lot of the ones that you can buy online. And so you can actually get machetes that are more accurate falchions than you can even buy falchions online. Guys, if you know some great quality, affordable falchions that have the correct properties, which is, again, proper profiling on the bevels, distal taper, and correct thinness with good quality steel, I'd love to get one. I've already ordered one from Cult of Athena, and I have no idea if it's gonna be correct or not, but it's actually quite short. And guess what? Since having filmed that video, the sword I mentioned I ordered has in fact arrived. Uh, the so-called falchion. Uh, and um, it is everything that I have talked about to the point where I want to get someone's uh, impression of this. So we'll bring Nate in just to see what he thinks about it. I heard swords. You did? So, so Nate. Yes. Oh, oh do, you, do you see this falchion that I have? That looks pretty, that's patinaed, that's, the, it's a little small on the yes. thing, but there's a, that looks okay, okay. very nice. It looks nice, doesn't it? It does. So I want to get your impressions for everyone sure. when you hold it. First, could you pick up this machete Absolutely. and get a feel of the weight? Now, that's what I was about to say. Now, mm. we're not talking um, modern representations of HMB, we're talking proper me medieval, medieval history. So weight comparison, 
Okay. That feels okay. like a sword, doesn't it? That's uh, a little misweighted, mm -hmm. but the weight overall mm -hmm. feels feels about right. So I uh, have a feel of this. Okay. It's it's heavier than what it should be. Way heavier. It's it looks a lot prettier than it feels. Mm -hmm. It looks a lot prettier than it feels. I love the patina. I've yeah. got to say, but is that a, actually? I think that's a fake patina. It might be, but oh. It's like, this is the thing. This is made out of decent steel. Yeah. Okay. And it has the correct profile, profile. but- Is it distal? It barely has a distal taper. Mm -hmm. We are talking about, this is two mil at the base and it's by the look of it, two mil at the tip. Like barely any, barely. if not a distal taper at all. It has no large bevel. No, I was just gonna say, it looks it, like a machete because it's such a fine- Exactly, exactly. This is a machete blade. No, it's heavy for a machete it's, blade. And it would be heavy for a machete blade. Because what we see here is all the subtle important elements to make this like a representative historical replica of a medieval falchion is not here. No. Apart from the superficial appearance. Uh, and because what I was talking about, the most important part of falchion is that the blades were supposed to be really, really thin. Really thin. Because the way that the tip swells, at this weight, it becomes way too top heavy, mm. okay? The falchion has this ingenious, and I mean ingenious design feature, okay? There is this interesting dichotomy when it comes to sword design about thin, having a thin blade means that it can cut easier because it doesn't have to push apart as much material. Mm -hmm. But that also means if you're making it thinner, you're gonna be reducing the weight because you need a certain amount of weight to actually Please get through. driving thought. Uh, force through. And so the actual design philosophy of real falchions was that we want to make a very, very thin blade, but if it was the width of a regular sword, it would then be too light. So, so you know what they did to mm. keep the weight at the standard level? They broadened the tip, okay? And that was specifically to keep it in the standard weight range that you want in regular swords, but that only works if it's the right thinness. Exactly. So that's that's kind of if I can pick this one back yeah, yeah, up. Yeah, please do. But it's like they didn't quite know mm -hmm. that it had to be thin. The the a plain very thin bar of steel. Um, but that's way the, too thin. The pummel is tiny. Yeah. yeah. But it is like it's a good looking sword. It's just not a HA one. Historically accurate. Exactly. It, when it comes to the historical accuracy, it's a piece of junk. <laughs> like, it's a pretty piece of junk. It's a pretty it's... piece of junk. But it's a piece of like it, like just trying to use like this is not mm. you know it is not wieldy at all because it's so top heavy and the failing is that the most identifiable feature of fashions yeah it's got the broad thing but so often people miss how thin they're supposed to be yes and then they've made it as robust as like a, a machete to the point where now this is just completely unfunctional as a result it's kind of verging on hmb which is historical mm -hmm. medieval battles mm -hmm. um and the guys there they use the falchion admittedly and some of mm -hmm. the falchion techniques but they are just big heavy cleavers mm -hmm. that are blunt and that's kind of where that one's starting to go it's not mm -hmm. a yeah, yeah. It's not a falchion. Now, what's interesting, the HMB has some historical precedent in medieval tournament combat. Yes. Because they would all wear heavy armor, and so the way that you defeat heavy armor is with blunt force. But a regular sword doesn't have the mass to actually regularly do blunt force through, you know, the armor. And so, because a lot of it is just hitting on armor, yes. right, they purposely have really overbuilt swords, which might actually be somewhat accurate to medieval tournament swords but not medieval warfare or combat swords. No and one of the things of a really thin blade which I'm sure people have already jumped in the comments for this one mm -hmm. is you can get it and lever it up inside oh, plates. Yeah, yeah. Now with HMB stabbing is actually not allowed because it is stabbing is the most dangerous thing oh, you can yeah. do um, but a really thin blade will then get up inside those really mm -hmm. close tight plates so yeah, yeah yeah not quite. It's just interesting that this sword arrived with all the criticisms that I was already mentioning <laughs> about most of the falchions that you buy mm. online, where they haven't thought about true functionality, it's way too thick and therefore way too heavy, and it doesn't have the correct um, uh, bevel profiling, so this is all flat, okay? When mm. there should be some level of bevel tapering here to reduce weight, and then if you had it thinner and you had uh, the bevel running all along from the fuller, 
this blade would easily be half the weight. Easily. Easily. Easily, because you're actually taking off more than half the exactly, metal. Exactly, exactly. And so it would still look the same on profile, except perhaps maybe such a profound mm. uh, and prominent and, main bevel. And you can see why, from a modern standpoint, like just getting mm. a machine to jig that out yeah. is, is easy, but like it would go from, you know, a bevel starting around about here to then coming up at a nice tight angle, which mm. would need a custom jig if we were going to go oh, into yeah, machine yeah. that. So to, to get such specific um, uh, edge profiling, oh, yeah. it, you need to do it hand ground on, on a sander most of the time. And uh, as a result, yeah, this is a perfect example of all the like worst types of falchions you can buy online because they all fall into this, um, you know, th this thing. And uh, it's just so interesting that this machete technically has a more historically authentic blade on it than, than this falchion. This falchion has a more machete-like blade than this machete. So it's interesting because like you said that that was the cheaper of one of the ones mm. and they've gone cheaper to be thin and it's actually come up more historical not that that's what the, <laughs> the manufacturers intended but it's a it's a beautiful fluke for us I know I know we're oh, gonna be having fun with this one there's going to be a future project video coming up where we're going to see what we can do with this blade but the purpose of this one is to actually more accurately help you define the difference and know the difference between a machete and a falchion okay and there's subtle differences summarizing it quickly correct profiling on the edge bevel and distal taper most machetes don't have that the fact that this one is from a true like the thing is i like, don't think that this is a great machete. The edge is complete dog crap. And there is such a, like a bevel lip on this where there is like burring over on one side that this would almost be unusable. So <laughs> this isn't a shout out to this one. There's problems with it. But the fact that there are some really good elements that they, got, they nailed really great, this is an excellent blank to make a very historical falchion like like look how light and nimble this is and this is with not even with a counterbalance so there is some fun we're going to have with that but there we go that's the difference not all falchions are machetes not all machetes are falchions but you can find some that are actually far more falchion like than even falchions that you can buy on the market today Thank you for watching guys, I hope you've enjoyed, hope you found it informative and of course I hope to see you on the next video here on Shadowversity. So until that time, farewell.